It seems like, and it doesn't just seem like, it's the reality. The WWE has absolutely fallen in love with first evers and history making. It's, it's their thing now. It's like the history making era is what the hell we should call this extension of the PG era. Reality era, my ass. We call it the era of first evers and history making. In recent years, just some of the things I can think of off the top of my head that were first evers history making. The 40 man Royal Rumble. <laughs> the Divas Revolution. Because all of a sudden WWE decided because they made it so that they're the only ones that ever gave a shit about their women. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but some of you, like me, that watched TNA years back, one of the reasons we actually watched TNA was because they presented their women decently. They gave their women a platform. They gave their women a chance. And their women's division, the knockouts division, kicked the shit out of anything WWE did. And going back to the knockouts division in its glory days, in its heyday, still kicks the shit out of this garbage that is the Divas Revolution. You got first ever history making, more women main eventing the TV shows Raw and Retarded Raw, also known as SmackDown Live. Main eventing pay-per-views, the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match, the first ever women's Hell in a Cell match, the first ever women's Royal Rumble match, the first time the women have ever main evented the Royal Rumble. The first ever seven man elimination chamber match. The first ever women's elimination chamber match. And then the cherry on the top in terms of this recent desire to be all about the first evers and making history. You see the announcement of the WWE talking about a 50 man greatest Royal Rumble. What in the fuck is going on here? The hell is happening? This whole love of WWE to be in history making mode is stupid and ridiculous because they're really reaching. Just because it's the first time you do something, because it's the first time ever, doesn't necessarily mean it's good history, doesn't necessarily mean it really truly makes history, or is relevant history, or is necessarily a good indication of where you are as a company. If anything, it's a condemnation of where the company has been in the past. And when you look at this, when you say they've done all this stuff, well, there's only so many things that you can do to be first ever or history making at this point in time without really truly scraping the bottom of the fucking barrel. Well, you got women and women's matches, main eventing, SummerSlam, WrestleMania is probably one. What the fuck are you going to do next? An intergender Royal Rumble? A female men's tag team champion? Two women holding the SmackDown or Raw men's tag team championships. No, they'll probably just create women's tag team championship belts. And that'll be history. You have a female WWE or WWE Universal champion. Frankly, that's history that probably should have made, been made years and years back with China. Or if things didn't go south so quickly with Karma because she was a dumb bitch, she would have been the one. But that's still out there. WrestleMania overseas? I mean, those are some of the most notable ones. And some of them are even kind of ridiculous. But we get to this point where this is all the company lives for. It's like the whole thing of not being in the business of making good guys and bad guys. We're in the reaction business. Which isn't the reality. It's just a justification and a poor excuse and defense mechanism for the retardation of WWE's current product. And saying kid friendly my ass, there are so many things that don't even make this kid friendly. Because when you look at it, how many good guys are there that the kids could really, really love and really, really, truly get emotional about and truly get behind? I know as a kid I had a shit ton of them. Guys that are watching this that are in their mid to late early 20s. They had them in the Attitude Era, the Monday Night Wars time frame. Different types of guys in different types of ways, but they still had those types of baby faces. Who the fuck you got now? Instead of focusing on creating interesting, compelling characters, writing good television programming, creating interesting, thought-provoking, emotionally investing, compelling storylines, 
presenting your big shows like their big shows and doing, you know, the things that WWE and other wrestling companies have done throughout history at different points in time that are actually indicative of good professional wrestling, the WWE is now in this lazy fucking mode, and that's exactly what it is. When you look at this company and its product now, above all else, if you did word association, you had to choose one word and just one word that perfectly epitomized the WWE and their product today. Raw, retarded raw, doesn't matter. Some of you would say shitty. Some of you would say boring. But to me, the number one word that encapsulates everything is lazy. There's no real domestic wrestling competition, so it doesn't matter as much. The company gets enough from their current television deals, knowing that they don't have to do much, do just enough to be able to tread water, which is what they do, cut expenses in other places, generate profits, even though they're not great profits, they're still profits nonetheless, and you're okay with that. You're okay with the half-empty venues because at the end of the year, you're managing a stock at this point as a publicly traded company, not actually running a wrestling or sports entertainment company. You're running and managing a stock, and that's exactly what it is. So this company's gotten lazy. Not lazy just based off of sheer success. Not lazy just based off of dominance in the marketplace. It's just generally lazy. It's gotten stale. The company's gotten old. The ideas have gotten old. The people running the company have gotten old. Some, a lot of the fans that are left have gotten freaking old. A lot of the things about this are old and fucking lazy. And now you got a 50-man freaking Greatest Royal Rumble match. This is, this is like... In music, instead of new artists coming up with new concepts and new things to do, we just collaborate with every fucking buddy under the sun and we remix every goddamn thing. Because we don't have talent. We don't have real creative abilities. We just have to try and capitalize other other crap that's been established in the past that works. And that really epitomizes what the WWE has done in recent years. The reliance on bringing back the big names from the past, the Rocks, the Stings, the so on and so forth, because they can't make those levels of new stars now like they used to, so they got to try and squeeze the blood out of the freaking beat or turn up with the guys from the past, the Goldbergs, the Lesners, all that crap. They can't make stars like that anymore, so you gotta ride these other guys into the fucking ground because what other choice do you have? Because you're too lazy and too stupid to be able to do anything effective about it. And that's what this crap is. First ever history making. It's lazy, stupid garbage. The WWE should challenge themselves to be better. Fans should challenge them to be better. Not that it matters because the people in WWE are too damn overly sensitive about anything. Oh, we don't ever do anything wrong. Shit. How the hell are you going to get better if you think everything you're doing is just okie dokie hunky dory fine? The biggest critics should be yourselves in this world. That's personally, relationship wise, business, everything. Nobody should be able to say something to you in terms of a criticism or a critique that you haven't already thought of and been harder on yourself about. And if you're in that place, you either A, are not very self-aware, or B, incredibly insecure and lack the confidence, the self-esteem, and the ego to be able to hold up to the say, I fucking suck in this area, or I'm not perfect, or I need to get better, or screw it, that's just going to be a weakness and I focus on my strengths in other places. The WWE's just lazy now. What are you going to do next year? A 60-man Royal Rumble? You know, if we get to the point where we're having the Royal Rumble on the moon, and if you get thrown out of the ring, there's a 50% chance you might float into the abyss of outer space, then we're talking about history worth talking about. That's the first ever that I could believe in, and a lot of you could too. But in the meantime, all this first ever history-making stuff is garbage. It is lazy garbage because the people that are running WWE are lazy and their ideas, their execution is garbage.